Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Let's take a walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Terrapin. Uh, this is their side project, volume 20, Dr. Crunkles. And I've done doc I have done some of the Crunkles beers so far. Uh, this is their White Farmhouse IPA. And this comes in at 7.3% alcohol by volume. And this is the 22 ounce bomber. They're out of Athens, Georgia. Uh, I have, I have not been disappointed very often with Terrapin beers. Uh, their hop executioner is awesome. Uh, I just I just don't think I've had too many bad beers from these guys. They usually do pretty good. And their side project is their experimental ones. And some of their side projects have turned into uh, regular year-round additions. And I think hop executioner was actually one of them. But they do a, a lot of good beers down there in Athens and uh, I really do like uh, what they do, so without me flapping my gums and all, and I wanted to tell you, I picked up the rest of the t-shirts today, so I have all sizes back in stock. If you need a small, medium, large, extra large, 2X, 3X, we got them all back in stock. So if you need one, give me a shout, let me know. We can fix you up. Alright guys, uh, let's get on with this one. Commercial description on this beer. The legendary hop hunter Crunkles turns up yet again, back from a tour of the Orient. His goal this time is to get experimental. His unbounded travels have earned him an honorary doctorate. Doctor of what? You may ask. This would be a question which only Crunkles knows the answer. And he has sequestered himself in the lab, perfecting a never-before-seen formula for his beloved IPA. So this is technically considered an IPA. I've read several reviews where a lot of people don't think it's quite an IPA, so we'll be the judge of that here shortly. I don't think it's got a bottling date on it, though. I may be mistaken, but I do not see one. The, the, what gives it away is it's got side project number 20, so if you wanted to know when it was done, you would probably have to go to their website to find that out. This is one of the beers that I got from... Uh, uh, from Lucan's Liquors when I ordered from down there the other week. Uh, Dr. Crunk, uh, Dr. Crunkle's White Farmhouse IPA reaches new heights in complexity and flavor by combining the malt and spices of a Belgian wheat beer, which is a wheat beer, the yeast of a farmhouse ale, and the hoppy goodness of an American IPA. Dr. Crunkle's Twisted Touch is a dash of white peppercorn followed by wood aging on white ash. And ash is what they make baseball bats out of. So uh, I have had beers that have been uh, been aged on ash before, and uh, they seem to be fairly tasty. So uh, that is all the this commercial description. So let's go over to the food pairings. The food pairings for this: the cheeses of the sharp blue cheddar, your more pungent cheeses, gorgonzola, Limburger, and your tangy cheeses, brick, edam, and feta. And it doesn't have a meat pairing for this, but most of your IPAs, especially your, your double IPAs or imperial IPAs, this is 7.3%, so it's right on the verge there. Uh, they go with your stronger dishes, uh, grilled meat, uh, chicken, uh, beef. A lot of your stronger dishes go well with your stronger IPAs. But this is a side project, so it's an experimental beer. The glassware is a tulip goblet chalice, oversized wine glass. I've got the, I, I didn't get the chalice out for this one, I've got the tulip out for this one, which is the Dubell glass. And the beer is not recommended for extended salaries because it's considered an IPA and you're going to lose that hoppiness over time. So it will fade on you. And I love their little caps. They're full, they come right off. There's no little bitty pieces or anything like that. The whole thing comes right off. 
I like how that works and you ain't got to pick up a little bitty pieces or, or worrying about getting that down in your beer guys. So. And the openers are about gone. I think I've got two left. The white one I think somebody said they wanted, but I haven't received the money for it yet. So there's three in the box, but I think only the red one and the green one are available. So if you need one of those two, give me a shout. Nice hiss on this one. Nice carbonation. All right, into the glass. We're not going to get too carried away because I've got a feeling this is going to pour a big head. And I was correct. Even pouring it down the side that aggressive. We got three fingers of head on that one. So, very well carbonated. Over into the light. It is a light amber color. Looks very reminiscent of a... Uh, Almost like a wheat beer, a wheat, uh, the wheat beer color. It's a light golden, not to the uh, macro lager amber, but I mean, or golden color, but it is a rather a light colored beer. A lot of bubbles streaming up. It was very well carbonated. I almost would go to the end being over carbonated, but it didn't explode and spew all over the place. But uh, I, I, I may have poured it just a little too aggressive for that, but we did get us a a good three fingers of head on that pour. If I'd have poured it down the center, <laughs> we'd probably got five fingers of head on that. So let's get a nose on this one and see what we got. Definitely getting the Belgian yeast up there. Wow, it's got a grapefruity apricot smell to it. It's very sweet smelling. And you can get that farmhouse funky yeast smell going in there too. It's a, it is a combination of the Belgian yeast and the, I mean, the farmhouse yeast in the Belgian style but the apricots is very very prominent in the smell to me grapefruit apricots and the Belgian farmhouse yeast is what I'm getting on the nose smells good smells sweet let's give it a taste see what we got see if it's an IPA That is different. The farmhouse funky yeast taste is definitely prominent in in, uh, in taste there. Definitely has a tanginess to it too. A little fizziness on the tongue, not too much. Interesting combination. It doesn't have the IBUs listed here. I didn't see them anyway. Let's check. Nope, it does not have it. I don't know if I would classify this as an IPA either. It doesn't have that big bitterness. It doesn't have a huge hop profile. There are some floral hops in this. A lot of carbonation. I'm already belching it back. And big soapy white bubbles. The nose is definitely apricots to me. A lot of effervescentness in this. I'm about to drink the whole thing here in front of you. Very tasty. It's very different though. A combination of a Belgian and an American IPA. With the farmhouse punk going in there too. Very different. Well, it's 40 degrees right out of the fridge. Let's let it warm up and share the other half, and I'll come back and do the final comments on this one. And uh, <laughs> I would say this fits the side project uh, experimental beers very well. It's it's a it's definitely a different beer than what your typical farmhouse would be. Although it's got a lot of those qualities, 
just don't know if it's got enough of the IPA qualities to be called an IPA. So let's let it warm up and I'll come back and do the final chug on this one, guys. All right, guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. I've been letting it warm up and sipping on it. The peppercorns come out after it's got to room temperature to me. Kind of tangy. Apricots are really, really strong in this beer. And it's got a nice... I don't want to say citrusy, but it's got that farmhouse Belgian thing going on, so it's okay. I mean, it's not blowing my socks off or my hair back or anything, but it's it's okay. It's uh, it's decent. So let's do the final chug here. A little bit of a uh, farmhouse style with apricots, peppercorns, but. Not what I could, what I would consider an IPA, guys. So, uh, as far as grading it in style, I, I would I wouldn't give it big numbers for an IPA. But it's a it's a nice, tasty uh, farmhouse ale. That's where I'm going to leave it, guys. So, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going to give this. It doesn't have a date on it, but it's a side project, and I still would like for them to put some kind of dating on it. So, I was going to give this an eight. Which is an A minus, but I'm gonna I'm gonna drop back and give it to seven, which is a B plus. If it had the date, it would have got the A minus, and it doesn't have the date on the bottle. And not a lot of people, like I keep telling y'all, have the resources where they can check the internet and all that stuff when they're buying beers. A lot of people don't have time for that. They they look at it and they want to see a date on the bottle instead of having to get their tablet or smartphone and go to the internet to try to find out when the beer was produced. So that's where I'm gonna leave that. So. Let's go over to see what the other guys say. Beer Advocate says 86, which is in their very good range. I'm down with that. That's about where I would give it, between an 86 and an 89. And we'll go over to Rate Beer. And Rate Beer says 92 overall, but 85 in the style. If it had a date on it, I could see the 92, but I'm more or less uh, between the 86 and the 89. Uh, as far as the grade for this one, guys. So we're going to give it the B plus uh, on today's grade. Uh, if you've had this one, give me some comments back on this one, whether you've had it, liked it, or didn't like it. I thought it was okay. Nothing to write home about. It, uh, it, was, uh, it was an okay beer. So let me know what you think of it. Give me some comments back on this one. Hit the like button. All the shirts are in. If you need one, give me a shout. Only a couple openers left. But uh, holler while you can. They're going to be gone again. All right, guys. Let's take that walk and see what's in the fridge tomorrow. See you then.